Hi, this is Gina Lazenby and welcome to my video blog. I'm here in sunny Sydney with my really good friend David Paul. Hi Gina. Great to see you. Nice to see you. Now David, David and I have had some interesting conversations over the year. David is a specialist in leadership and he's, uh, he's lectured around the world in leadership, complex change and it really is leadership for these times, isn't it? Indeed. It's, I mean you've worked with world leaders. Yeah. We can't say who. But you work with government, uh, government leaders and industry leaders Absolutely. in coaching them on who they should be as a leader now. Exactly, for these times. Because we've talked about uh, women leaders, have we not? I went to Australia in the last couple of weeks and I see the conversations about Julia Gillard and I, I kind of caught up on the gossip of notionally her stabbing Kevin Rudd in the back and replacing him and then getting a real mandate yes. from her team yeah. to carry on as uh, Prime Minister. Indeed. And one of the things we were talking about actually on International Women's Day, a group of us, was how bad the press is about her and how personal the insults are beyond her politics. Indeed. So what is it about women who are uh, in these high positions of leadership that they attract such negative publicity and press? Why aren't they supported? I think one thing is, Gina, that is that we need leadership at the very senior levels to be able to capture the mood of our times. Mm. And at the moment, women who are up there are trying to do that. And the reason they don't get the full support is because they don't mobilise women. They, ad they address, their, their entire address is to men. Hmm. So they're playing the man's game. They're playing the man's That's game. That's how they got there. Indeed, indeed. And if you think of any CEO of any company, of, of most companies, they get to the top and they still play the man's game. And that's what we're missing, is what does the feminine bring to leadership? Mm. So they play, invariably, not exclusively, but invariably they're playing the man's game to get there. Indeed. And then they play, play, continue to play the, 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 the male way when they're there. Yeah. And so the trick is, is to at some point be confident enough in your position that you can uh, change the way you're leading and be more of a woman. And bring the feminine energy mm -hmm. to that leadership position. Not just being a woman, because there are lots of women who are, who are actually women up there. Of course, yeah. But it's about bringing that presence, yeah. that spirit, that energy that transforms people. Women have energy that transforms people. Ask any husband who would tell you. I listen to my wife. Mm -hmm. Ask any male prime mm -hmm. minister, mm -hmm. they'll say, mm -hmm. I listen to my wife. John Howard, our longest serving prime minister, or second longest serving prime minister, he always said, I always listen to my wife. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, women run the show. They just haven't taken the moment to say, we do have the power to do it. So what's it going to take then? It's going to take women to say, let's come together for the first time in history. Mm -hmm. Let's come together. Actually, the second time in history, the first time is when they bandy together to get the female vote. Yes. That was unbelievable. Right. Okay. It, and it, unprecedented in history. Yeah. And every nation then eventually followed, except for the Muslim countries at the moment. Yes. But that's also changing, mm -hmm. even as we speak. Mm -hmm. However, we need to get women to come together and say, let's do three things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And the three things might be, let's focus our politics on, and let's just argue for the sake of argument. Let's just say, we need to change the way our organizations are working. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of downsizing and getting rid of people, let's get people to say, let's take pay cuts. Let's find job share. Let's find a whole range of things that work. Um, let's be creative. Let's be creative. Yeah. Let's be innovative. Let's, yeah. Women always have the ideas. Men implement them. I really believe We're so that. creative. <laughs> We're so creative. We do. You look at any home. Who, who decorates it? Yeah. You look at any of the, the values. Who has the values? Mm. Who instills the values? It's the mother. It's the wife. Mm. It's, it's, it's that notion of the feminine energy. So we need to bring that, that, that uh, mothering feminine energy. We do, absolutely, to creating this the new world that we want, this the new the new way of, of having money circulate and indeed. finance. Yes, indeed. And in fact, if you look at the Grameen Bank or any of those microfinancing banks, they don't they don't bank on men. They bank yeah. on women. Yeah, ninety six percent of their clientele at least. Ninety six percent. Now that is enormous. Mm. 
for any nation. Mm. So we need to have a look at how can we harness that same energy in Western countries? Mm. How can we tap into that energy which says enough is enough? Mm. We've been through these great financial crises many, many times. This is the, the last 12 years was just surviving the last financial crisis. Now we're in the fifth year of this financial crisis and we're still stuck in it. Why is it that we do not have the, the wisdom, the knowledge, the vast experience to tap into and say, mm. what can we do differently? And the answer seriously is women. So if uh, so many female leaders in businesses and in government are um, feeling that they have to play the man's game, do things in a masculine way and show that they're as stern and strong as men, who do you see out there leading and leading from their feminine and bringing those feminine values into what they do either in, 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 in politics or in, in corporations? Who have you seen because you're kind of in tune with... Okay, I'm going to give you two past examples yeah. and then I'm going to give you a couple of new examples. Great. Okay, a couple of past examples. Yeah. If you look at Mother Teresa, yeah. who died a multi-multi-millionaire, but touched the lives of not just the place she worked, but... She died a millionaire? Absolutely. She won every major prize in the world. Nobel Prize, the Templeton Prize, and my goodness. And you say her name, everyone knows who she is. Okay? And they have a sense of reverence, mm -hmm. a sense of sainthood. Even the person on the street you say the name of Mother Teresa and they will think of her as the same. Yeah. Now, ask, of, ask them about her managerial skills or her leadership skills, they wouldn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. But yet she ran a multi-global organization. Yeah. She made okay. change, didn't she? She made change. And her simple message was, you've got to love the change, you've got to love the people going through change. That was one example. Another example that we all know about is Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. And you can call her a, a, you know, a, an airhead, you can call her a blonde bimbo, but you mention her name, everybody knows who she is. Mm -hmm. And she did bring about change. Incredible change. You just look at her funeral. Mm -hmm. Men and women wept mm -hmm. at her Deeply funeral. Deeply moved. Deeply moved. Now, she touched everyone's lives. Mm -hmm. Now, you wouldn't get the same with Camilla, even though she's famous. You wouldn't get the same with um, even the Queen, perhaps. But there is a sense of reverence. For, for the feminine. Now, in the modern times, the only perhaps greatest example in politics would be Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. who is trying to bring about change. But she's working in a male dominated um, climate. Oh, so did she shift? Um, because she was more masculine, wasn't she? I suppose she had to be to survive the political process in America. I mean, it's just. It's so, um, it's so devastating it and, and adversarial and aggressive. It's very hard to survive it in a feminine way. It is. And so I think, has she shifted? She has. Immensely. Since, yeah. Immensely shifted. Since she shifted. came into office. Yes. Mm. Immensely shifted. And she's also very different to the past two mm -hmm. um, Secretary of States, which mm -hmm. were the one before her was Condoleezza Rice, yeah. and the one before that was Madeleine Albright. Right. Yeah. So three women mm -hmm. who really have shaped the world to some degree. Interesting. Yeah. But Hillary, at the moment, is trying to find the feminine voice, mm -hmm. or to give voice to the feminine, I should say. Um, again, she's in a position of power. In fact, she's more respected in some ways than the president mm. um, because she's a seasoned intellectual. Mm. Now, the other person that I wanted to mention was um, the CEO of PepsiCo mm, globally. Yes. Mm -hmm. First female CEO of a large multinational corporation um, and very successful. And the way she's doing that is through culture and for the first time that has ever happened. Um, other, other companies are trying to do it through culture, but doing it the, the male way, which is let's um, almost legislate the culture. Mm -hmm. Let's almost drive it as opposed to let's build the connections, let's build the people, let's build the relationships, which is what the feminine is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about relationships, but we don't actually build them. We tick them off our list we don't have the genuine, authentic relationships, the connections mm -hmm. that we need. We need to have life-changing transformations.